Right, everybody, here we go. Lioness on her way back to the cubs. We're going to go to Facebook as well. Right, good morning everybody on Facebook. Here we have a lioness, just a lioness walking through the bush. You might say to yourself, what's so exciting about that? Well, we've been sat here next to this little den site all morning. Since quarter past six, we've been here waiting for the lionesses to come back and here she comes. We parked, I hope, perfectly in order to see the young cubs come out of the den site when she comes towards them. The den is just over here. It's this little group of rocks there. We think the cubs are just inside there. That's where we saw them yesterday. And we're hoping for a magnificent reunion of unspeakable cuteness within the next five minutes or so. My name is James Hendry. It's wonderful to have you with us. Fergus is on camera. Hello, Fergus. There uh, he is, saluting to you. And here comes the lioness, the mother of these cubs. And there have been five or six people coming through here doing exactly the same thing as us, hoping that the lioness would come up and we'd see these cubs. And I think now, finally, we're going to be in luck. Isn't this wonderful? I think they have eaten last night. Yeah, Susie, you say sloping along, beautiful, absolutely. We saw a vulture going down just behind where she was. And what is so special about this, I think that they went off hunting last night and I think quite possibly they killed and they've been eating all morning and now mum has decided that it's time she came and fed her little babies. Oh, we've been scanning the horizon. We've been staring from rock to rock. Every slightly beige-colored object around here has been investigated a hundred times since quarter past six this morning. And here, finally, this magnificent cat is on the way to her youngsters. There are nine cubs in this den site. And we'll just keep an eye out. I suspect the other two lionesses, there are three in this pride, are still on the kill. And Ellen, you say patience pays off at times. It does. And you know, I was about to leave. I was about to go and look and see where those vultures were going down. And I think we'd have found probably two lionesses, missed this one coming up. And what a disaster that would have been. There she comes. She's now about ooh, 60 meters or so from the cubs. And let's see, I hope we're not going to get ourselves behind the bush. We should be fine here where we are now. All right, be patient, everybody. And every, just now we're going to hear the call. She's going to call them. Oh, oh, I hope. Yeah, she's going to pop out. Come on, my dear. There you are. Don't start calling just yet. Just get beyond this bush, next bush. Now be patient, everybody. She's going to disappear for a little while. There's quite a thick bush between us and her now. We're going to watch the den now. Maybe let's get onto the den, Ferg. I'll tell you if she starts to call. I can't hear anything. There's a very strong wind at the moment. There's the den site. We'll keep an eye there. I'm watching for the lioness. To now she's calling. She's calling. Keep an eye on the den there. Shortly, nine little fluff balls are going to come out. Here she comes. She's come. This is going to be a cuteness overload, as Teresa has said. Come on, my dear. Call them out. And call them out so that we can see them, please. Ferg, I'm going to roll forward slightly. I think they're just a little... She's calling. Oh, look, there they are! <laughs> oh, hooray! <laughs> Is that not the best? Look at them all, and they'll just flow out of that hole. Look! She's having a little bit of water to drink. That's not all of them. There are still more. <laughs> oh, is that not just too precious for words? <laughs> and look, there's another one coming around the other side. 
Liz, you say you're so excited to see this. I can't believe it either. I thought we'd be wasted our time today. And here we sit. Oh, that's wonderful. There are others just to the left behind. There yeah, they are. <laughs> now, many of you will say that, uh, you know, leopard cubs are cute and wild dog puppies are cute and maybe even hyena cubs. But to me, there is nothing in nature cuter than a little lion cub. Oh, this is just too precious. Now, she, of course, will struggle to feed all of them, but the other two lionesses will be regaining their strength. Another one coming around the side now, tiny little thing. And she looks almost as if she's perhaps hoping, oh, wow. They're so little, they can't even make that growling sound yet. Leanne, I'm afraid I missed your comment. What was that? Another one coming up just to play. And now there's almost nothing to say. Now we just have this almost unspeakable kind of collection of adorable fluff all over the place. Leona, you say it's cuteness extreme. Absolutely it is. And if you're wondering how to get hold of us, how to ask a question or make a comment, just put it in the uh, comment section of this podcast. And we'll do our level best to address any comments or questions that you have. One, two, three so far. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All of them are there. <laughs> Look at them all. Now, Angela, you want to know if they're all her cubs? Absolutely not. They're not all her cubs. There are three lionesses here. It's most likely that all three of them have had a litter. If you look very carefully, you will see that they are slightly different sizes. I think we're looking at cubs from ages around about five weeks to about eight weeks. Ah, is she going to take them back to the kill? That will astonish me. If she takes little things like this back to the kill, I will be absolutely amazed. Wow, we will be in for a morning then. Ferg, I'm going to just roll gently down the hill. Space. Oh dear, we've lost... Okay, I don't know how far we're going to be able to actually move with them while we are here because we, our signal is not great, so we keep losing picture. So what I'm going to do is say a kind of temporary goodbye to you and keep you posted and say that if they do get to the kill, we'll go back live again. But let's just stay live. If we go black screen again, well, then you'll know that we've lost signal, but we will keep following them. Let's stay live now and we'll try and follow them and see if the signal lasts. That makes sense. This is just too spectacular. Fergus. Are we back again? Good. Angela, you're wondering if they're the same age. No, like I just said, they are between five weeks, I think, and about eight weeks. Now, just keep me posted, please, on whether or not we have picture. I think the kill is just over the next ridge. So I think we should follow them to the kill if we can. And then if we lose signal, then we can just end the broadcast and we'll start it again when the picture stabilizes at the kill, perhaps. 
You may have seen some other vehicles. They are, of course, tourists in the Masai Mara, and without their presence, of course, we would be unable uh, to maintain this area as the magnificent conservation space that it is. She's taking them to the kill. I cannot believe our luck today. Just let them go past there, then we'll move on again. Look at them all! Kaylee, you say, will they come back to the den afterwards? Yes, I think it's highly likely that they will. You know, they're, they're, not, they're still very, very tiny things. I'm just going to try and maintain as much high ground as possible. It's going to be a little bit difficult through here, but we're going to try just so that we don't lose signal. What on earth was that? There was a scrub hare. Okay, the scrub hare got a bit of a fright. Going to be a little tricky through this section here. Um, should be alright. Don't worry about one or two scratches and scrapes. It's just what happens when you have to drive off-road. Here they come, right up here. Now Sandy, you want to know how often little cubs like this need to eat? Uh, well, often, but it's not normally meat that they eat. You know, the oldest ones, if, if I'm correct, and they're about eight weeks old, they will have started eating meat probably about two weeks ago. You know, they, they will start to wean supposedly at six weeks. But because they're all so similarly aged, the youngsters of five weeks will start to uh, they'll start to wean early, and the older ones, well, they'll sl wean slightly later. But to have them all moving towards a kill like this is just beyond special. Okay, let's move again. We'll get up onto the top of the ridge there and see if we can't watch them coming towards us. I don't know what they killed. There are some wildebeers still around. It's quite possible that they killed a buffalo, something bigger, during the course of the night. Three lionesses, like I say. This pride is the Black Rock Pride. Very well-known pride of the area, and so named for the Black Rocks, in which we saw them emerging, from which we saw them emerging. We just go along here, get a little bit in front of them, and then we can have a look. A bit of a rock field we're going into here. There they come. Mum is just down there. Just sniffing the wind, it's a strong wind, and they have to keep up these little cubs. They are in real danger now. It's not impossible that a hyena loping home after a night of wassailing could emerge from here. Let's just keep a count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They've, Nadine, you want to know if they could get lost? Absolutely they could get lost. And they need to keep up. And this is where the youngsters are going to be in a vulnerable position. They must try and keep up because lions are not good at keeping watch over stragglers or weak ones or runts. They are very, very kind of mercenary about their attitudes. If you can't keep up with the pride, well, that's it. There comes the last one there, Ferg, with a stick in its mouth. <laughs> Don't get lost, my dear. Drop your stick and run. Come on. Oh, that's just too gorgeous. Now, that's in, that thing is in danger, not so much from hyenas, I don't think, but I mean, even a big bird of prey would swoop down and grab that. Sticks dropped, good. Keep up, keep up, little thing. Oh, special, special stuff, this. Right, let's carry on. Sorry, Fergus, didn't get a warning there. Now we saw come from just the bridge here, and I think that's where the kill is. Careful over these rocks. Kaylee, you're wondering if we're heading towards where we noticed the vultures? Yes, that's exactly where we're heading. But I'm going to follow her. I'm not going to guess. Somebody's just has guessed and gone over the top there. So I'm pretty sure that that is where they're going. Let's just get around the front here. 
there are another three vehicles around and so we all want to stay kind of distant from each other so we don't put too much pressure on them not that they seem the slightest bit affected by us they seem completely relaxed I want to know if there's some kind of scientific explanation for why lion cubs are so cute. No, I don't think there is. I think it's just that we find them cute because they look like teddy bears. Alright, I think I can see where they're going. We're going to get out into the open here. We're going to have to be quite patient. I can see them coming. But let's just move into the open here and we'll see them coming through this open area. You see them there, Ferg? They're just coming there. Maybe let me move around this bit. And I know all of you are going on and on about how cute the sighting is. It is... Uh, I mean... I've become quite embarrassed by my inability to speak in a normal voice when I'm looking at lion cubs. You got them. We'll just stop here and wait for them to come down through that area. You had them, Ferg. <laughs> I think they're coming through that area. Let's just wait here. Must be patient, continue to be patient. And I'm gonna look to where, oh, I can see, I can see the other lions. Okay, they're quite a distance still, probably about, I'm gonna say a quarter of a mile, 400 meters. They're definitely on a kill. There are vultures there. Have you got them there? I can't see these little ones just yet. And interestingly that she's chosen to take them along the road. She may well come off the road. Oh, she's calling them. Well spotted. Fantastic stuff. Come on, my dear. We've got quite a far way to go, little things. Yeah, I agree. Candy, you say this is, or Sandy, you say this is quite a long journey for these little cubs. I agree with you, yes. I think it is quite a long journey. But it's not impossible. Well, let's hope it's not impossible. Like I say, I'm, I'm guessing. Oh yeah, between three or four hundred meters from where I'm sitting here, and so another hundred from where they are. Yeah, a quarter of a mile or so to get to the kill. I think some of them are probably getting a little bit tired. Come on, come on. She's actually being really quite motherly about this. Lions can often be fairly unmotherly about this sort of thing. I suppose it's it's not impossible that she will put them into the thicket there. And James, as you say, absolutely, I keep forgetting this, uh, perfect sighting for World Animal Day with the theme being lions, absolutely. There's a lot of playful behavior there and I think they're going to get themselves into trouble, those lions, from that adult. Shall we move in there? I think let's, yeah, let's show where the kill is. You can see the other vehicle there. And the kill is just below them to the left. There's a Thompson's gazelle. And if you go to the left of that, there you'll just see the lion sticking its head out of the ground. And of course, that's not a lion in the vehicle, that's a person. <laughs> All right, let's go around the corner here. what is going on with these things. Yeah, Pamela, I have exactly the same feeling every time I see these little cubs. You say you wish you could cuddle with them. Wouldn't it be wonderful to cuddle a lion cub? Well, yes, in theory it would. Remember, there are places that you can cuddle lion cubs. There they come. And it is not to be encouraged. So although we're going to imagine cuddling lion cubs, although the opportunity does exist for human beings to do it, it almost always ends up in complete tragedy. So just bear that in mind and we'll all just imagine what it would be like and promise never to do it ourselves. 
they're being very um, <laughs> they're being very naughty. I, d I think she's trying to cajole them to coming towards the kill site, but at the moment they're not being particularly cooperative about it. She might leave them there for a while. So you can see she's panting. She's not panting because it's hot. It's not hot yet. I mean, it's warming up, but it's not hot. And I think you'll find that she's panting because she's eaten so much. Now she's pulling them out into the sun. Here we go. Oof, I find this quite difficult to watch, just in case one of the nine drops off the back and isn't noticed. You haven't got far to go now, my dear. Keep going. See how naughty they are? They're just like my nephews. Come over here, and they do exactly the opposite. Now, Sandy, you say, will the lioness look after all the cubs, uh, e even the ones that aren't hers, if danger came? Sandy, she, she would, I think. I am unconvinced that the lionesses of this pride make any, uh, or have any differentiation between their own cubs and the cubs of their siblings or, or cousins. It's entirely, because they all cross suckle, of course, it's entirely likely that she sees them as her own, all of them, and likewise that the other lionesses see them as, all of them as their own. And they're going back into the thickets there. She's come about, I'd say, half the way to the kill. We'll give her another, I don't know, three minutes or so in that area. Oh, she's laying, lying down. Okay, let's move in there and just get a nice look at the cubs. Because obviously the cubs are not going to go across to the kill without her. I'm fascinated by this. I don't, I don't really know how to explain why she'd have pulled them out of the safety there and then lied, lay, sort of lain down halfway to the kill unless she's just a bit tired or unless she realizes a few of them are a bit tired and she's going to give them a small drink of milk perhaps and then carry on. But many of them have now skedaddled across or around the other side. They're going to, you're going to see some vehicles now, quite a few. Sorry about that. That is the, how this place pays for itself, of course. There we go. I think let's just stop here. There is the lioness and some of the cubs. Oh, wonderful. Okay, we're going to call it quits on this particular broadcast. If they get going again and start moving towards the kill, we'll go live again. Thank you very much for your questions and comments. What a magnificent morning here in the Masai Mara. We will hopefully see you very shortly. The, lot, the rock. That is absolutely astounding. I don't know what to do now. Oh, maybe let's go back that way. We know where the lioness is here. Let's just try and get a kind of eagle's eye view on the situation. So let's get a bit up, get up high, and try and stay away from the cubs that are now on their own moving back towards the den site. We don't want to give them a fright. No, they have skedaddled. Very difficult to tell what's going on. Can you see them at all, folks? No, they're all running along the road on their own, which I would suggest is quite dangerous. 
I'm going to wait here. You can see them there. Let me try and just level the car slightly. Sorry, Ferg, it's a disaster for you, but not much I can do. They are just moving along the road there. We'll try and keep our distance, I think. Now they're in danger. This is very strange. They're being naughty, and I think they're just playing. There are going to be some vehicles, I'm afraid. Some of them, I don't know if this running is playfulness or if it's a sense of insecurity. I suspect that it is the latter. That they were just too far from the den site for them to be comfortable and perhaps a little tired. We're going to just try and unravel what's going on here, figure out what's happening with these magnificent little cubs. And while we do that, we're going to hand you back to Steph at Juma and see what he's going to find on foot.